So I know when I was learning how to code, my main goal was to get a job. And I know a lot of people want to know what's the fastest way that they can get hired as a web developer going the self-taught route. In this video, I want to talk about everything that I think you need to have in order to get hired as soon as possible as a web developer. Before we get into this video, make sure you hit that like button. It'll help me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm. All right, let's get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is figure out what area of web development you want to get into. The three main areas are front-end development, back-end development, and full-stack development. When I was teaching myself how to code, I decided that I wanted to be a front-end developer. Generally, from what I've experienced, there's really like two types of front-end developers. You have front-end developers that do more of the user interface development. They tend to work with a little bit more CSS, and they focus more on building out the UI. And the JavaScript that they use is more for modifying and changing things on the page when a user interacts with it. The other type of front-end developer is more of a middle-end developer. They handle more of the data manipulation, they communicate more of the back-end stuff to the front-end, and then they take whatever a user enters on the front-end and push it towards the back-end. They deal with a lot of API stuff and they deal with a lot of server requests. Now, a good front-end developer will be able to do all of those things, but generally I've noticed that front-end development has been broken down into like UI, UX developer, and then a front-end developer that really is almost more of a back-end developer, but they work within the front-end of stuff. And this might be confusing if you're new and you don't really understand what I'm saying, but I just want to get that out there to let you know that there is some differences in what some types of front-end developers do. Then you have a back-end developer. A back-end developer is not gonna interact with the front-end as much, but you're still gonna have to understand how the front-end works if you're gonna be a back-end developer. If you decide to be a back-end developer, you can avoid having to learn a lot of CSS and you'll mostly need to understand HTML and JavaScript, but you will be working more with databases and the server, and you'll be working more with a lot of the stuff that happens behind the scenes of a website and not really what a user is gonna be interacting with. Then you have a full stack developer. A full stack developer is kind of like the jack of all trades. A full stack developer does everything. They can build out a UI if they need to. They know how to handle JavaScript to manipulate the page or to feed data back and forth from the front end to the back end. They understand databases and they kind of just do it all. Generally, in smaller development environments and in a lot of places, most of us end up full stack at some point. So now that you have an idea of the three different types of web developers that there are out there, you're going to need to decide what area you want to focus on and start learning some code. And if you're a web developer, you're going to be working with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. There's just no doubt about it. And how much of each you decide to learn really depends on the area that you choose to focus on. If you want to be a UI developer, you're going to have to learn more CSS. If you want to be a back-end developer, you're not going to need to learn as much CSS, but you're going to have to be proficient with JavaScript. I don't want to digress and, and take this off topic, but I do want to mention, if you're trying to be a web developer, don't worry too much about what first language you're going to work with and what framework you're going to work with. Many people will tell you go out and research what language or what framework is popular in your area and what jobs are looking for. And, that, and generally that's good advice. But what ends up happening is that gets you jumping around and then you, you really don't know what to learn because you start seeing job descriptions that name like every framework and multiple programming languages and it just gets confusing. If you're trying to get hired as fast as possible as a web developer, just focus on JavaScript. Learn React if you decide to go front end and then focus on using Node.js and Express if you want to learn back end development. And if you want to learn full stack development, just take the MERN stack. So for resources, there's a ton of learning resources out there. I almost always recommend Free Code Camp or the Odin Project. They are 100% free, they're project-based learning, and they focus on getting you job ready. Literally, their curriculum is set up to get you hired. I use both of them quite a bit when I was learning how to code, and I think that they are both really, really good resources. They focus on JavaScript, and they'll focus on React for the front end, and they'll focus on Node for the back end. And that's plenty to make you marketable as a web developer when you're learning how to code and trying to get hired. Once you've gone through the basics and you've built some of the projects, I think the very first thing you should do is set up a Get Hub account and start learning Git. Almost all development teams are gonna use some form of version control and Git is very popular. Some people use SVN, but we don't like those people. We wanna use Git and Git is 
just like the industry standard. Also, it's really good to set up a GitHub account because now the stuff that you're building as you move through more of the advanced curriculum on the Odin project or on Free Code Camp, where you start building out things on your own, you'll start committing to GitHub and it'll start showing that you're active and you'll get your little green dots. And this is something that employers will look at. The next thing is get your portfolio set up, get your resume ready, get your LinkedIn set up. And the whole point of all this is to get you job ready. And I know at this point, you may not feel job ready. You may not feel like you're ready to start applying. I honestly believe it's better to start doing this sooner than later, because if a job does come up somehow, you'll have everything you need in order to apply. So you won't have to make anyone wait and you won't be stressed with having to get it done. So just do these things. So start with your GitHub, then make sure your portfolio is at least started. The next thing you're going to want to do is set up that resume. Even if you don't have any experience, just fluff it, just make a resume, just have one. Even if you have no tech experience, you're going to want to have a resume because if you apply for a job, you're going to need one. And if you don't have a LinkedIn account, go set up a LinkedIn and make it look nice. I recommend checking out some of Danny Thompson's videos. He's really big on LinkedIn and getting your LinkedIn set up. I think he has like an hour long tutorial and you should have a nice looking LinkedIn because employers and recruiters and potential people who might give you a job are gonna look at these things and it's better to have them sooner than later. Like your social media accounts, set up a Twitter account, start doing stuff on YouTube, start putting everything out there, build in public because this helps people know that you're serious about it. And you can even find other people who are learning how to code, trying to do the same thing that you're doing and maybe even find an accountability buddy. And I'm gonna kind of use that as a segue into the very next thing that I think that you should be doing if you're trying to get hired as soon as possible as a web developer is start networking right away. I mean, right away, even if you've just done a little bit of the free code camp stuff and you don't have all the job ready stuff that I just mentioned, start networking as soon as possible. If you're not able to find anything locally, turn to the internet. There's discord servers for almost every programming language. There's Slack groups for almost every programming language. There's subreddits, there's tech Twitter. There's just so many ways for you to network nowadays that there is no reason for you to learn by yourself anymore. And and I did that the hard way. I learned how to code by myself and I waited way too long to start networking. And the reason why I'm telling you to start networking right away is because it is something that I wish I would have done because I really think that it would have sped up my process. Just getting around people who are actually working as developers, who can give you pointers. You can maybe even find a mentor. You can find a friend to do it with. It's a really good thing to get started right away. Another thing that you wanna get started right away after you've completed the job ready stuff that I mentioned, your GitHub account, your resume, your portfolio, once all those things are set and, and ready to go, start applying for jobs. Don't wait until you're ready. Don't feel like you need to learn more. Don't feel like you need to build more. Just start applying for jobs. Applying for jobs is a skill. The more you apply and the more you interview, the easier it is for you to talk to these potential employers, the more comfortable you'll feel, and you just never know what a company is looking for. Your definition of ready might not be their definition of ready, and they may be willing to hire you, especially if you've got all your ducks in a row and you've actually been learning and really been focusing on building your portfolio and building your projects. You could be way further along than you think you are. So if you wanna get hired as quickly as possible, start applying as quickly as possible. One quick note, when you actually do start applying, make sure that you tailor your resume to each potential job and also include a personal cover letter that really details all the reasons why you want that job at that company. This can give you the edge. Nothing's guaranteed. You may in fact be way too early to start applying, but you just never know if that resume and that cover letter lands on the right hiring manager's desk and they read it and they feel that you are worthy of an interview, then that's just more practice for you. If you don't get that job, whatever, you're going to go through a lot of applications. You're going to go through a lot of interviews. You're going to go through a lot of rejection in this process. It's not easy getting a job self-taught. And if you want to do it as fast as possible, you need to start applying and you need to start getting comfortable at interviews. So, I mentioned making your resume and not having any experience. And now if you're at the point where you're ready to start getting some real experience, you've built all the generic to-do apps and calculators and hangman, and you've done all the things that you feel that you can build from a tutorial, it's time for you to start getting some real experience. It's really hard to get that first experience as a self-taught developer. 
I volunteered my time to some job I found on Craigslist, which was basically just getting free work out of me, but it gave me some experience in a real code base. I personally recommend if you are gonna go out there and work for free, the first thing that you should try to do is contribute to open source projects. There's plenty of lists out there. If you do a quick Google search for good open source projects for beginners, you'll find that a lot of people have created lists that you can check out and you can find projects that will allow you to start contributing and writing code for a big code base. A lot of the applications that we use as developers are open source projects. They always have bugs that need to be fixed. They always have things that need to be implemented. They always need people to work on them because many of these projects aren't paying people to work on them. And it's just an easy way for someone with very little to no experience to start writing some code in a real code base. If you don't feel comfortable contributing to open source or taking on open source task. I get it, I was the same way. I wish I would have contributed to open source instead. I found other ways to get experience. And a couple of those ways is to try to freelance. Now the thing with freelancing is you wanna find freelancing work that's specific to the type of work that you're gonna be doing as a web developer. I recommend staying away from like the WordPress work or the Shopify websites and the stuff that is very much drag and drop or if you could find some WordPress work that has you actually writing some PHP or writing some custom JavaScript on the front end or something like that, then I would say go with those kind of jobs. But you wanna stay away from jobs that are gonna get you derailed from what you've been learning. If you've been focusing on the Mern stack and you've been working with Mongo and Express and React and Node, try to find freelancing work in those stacks. It's gonna be hard. There's not a lot of them out there and you're not gonna have experience. So. If you are able to find some of these jobs, you're probably gonna be working for free. Again, the whole point of this is to get experience that you can put on your resume and fluff it up a little bit. And it's just something for you to be able to talk about when you do start getting interviews. Your last option is to create work. Go and find someone who needs a website. Go build someone a completely overkill website using the stack that you're learning just because you need to put it on your resume. So just try to get whatever experience you can and just try to keep building as much as you possibly can. And that's gonna be the last thing I'm gonna say. At this point, if you've been learning this long and you have all your job ready stuff, you have all the things that I mentioned in this video and you're at the point where you feel like, man, I'm just never gonna get hired. You know, I've been learning for three months, I've been learning for six months, I've been learning for almost a year. You are way closer than you think you are. Make sure that you're applying, make sure that you're networking, because if you've done a lot of these things that I mentioned, and you know how to build a React app, if you know how to work within the Mern stack, if you are building things and you understand how to code and you feel comfortable building a website from scratch, and you're at a point where everything's kind of starting to click, but it just feels like it's taking too long, just keep going. I remember telling my wife this at one point when I was learning how to code and I told her, I'm like, I don't care. I'm going to get to the point where somebody's going to have to hire me. Like they're going to see my portfolio and they're going to have to give me a job because I'm going to be good enough for what they need and I'm gonna be cheap enough because I'm a junior self-taught developer with no education and trying to get a job. I ended up landing a $50,000 position as my first web developer job. I've been doing it for five years now. I know that it's possible. There's a lot of naysayers out there. There's a lot of people that'll tell you you won't be able to do it, but the truth is consistency, determination, and grit is all you need. It might take you a while. It might not happen in three months like you see a lot of people tell you it will. You don't have to spend a ton of money. If you stick with it and you do it, you can accomplish this. Just keep fucking going. That's all you have to do. And eventually you'll get hired. All right, with all that said, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.